Hey guys, welcome back to AR Renu. So today we are going to create a filter or a lens on Snapchat. So usually for us to create things on Snapchat, we use another software altogether. It's called Lens Studio. So previously I did a tutorial on how do you get started on Spark AR, which is the the place where you create filters and lenses for Instagram and Facebook. But today we're going to talk about how do we create a very simple lens on Snapchat. So more of what you're going to learn today is how do you animate within Lens Studio itself, which is the software itself, and also how do you use a trigger. So today's trigger is just a tap. It's very simple. So let's get to it. Okay. So once you download Lens Studio, uh, this is the icon that will appear on your desktop. I've already added the link to downloading Lens Studio in the description box below. So check it out there. So what you have to do is just have to double click on Lens Studio. And yeah, once you turn it on, you'll see that there's so many templates. Okay, so there are so many templates here that you can use and just experiment with. Uh, but today we're not going to use the template. We're just going to go towards a new project. Okay, so click on new project. And there's like a few panels on Lens Studio that you need to know about. Hi. So, first thing you have is the objects panel. So, the objects panel is where you create your AR experience. So, whatever that you see on your face, whatever that you want to see on your screen, you have to create it on the objects panel. Your resources panel is the pictures that you are going to use. So, let's say you're going to use a picture from Photoshop or Google, anything, a tree model, everything has to go here. Okay, your inspector panel is like your settings panel. So anything that you want to change, the size, the position, adding in any animation, stuff like that, it goes in your inspector panel. Your preview panel is for you to see what's happening. If you don't want to look at your own face, it's fine. You can actually just click on this icon here and you can get uh, a person or you can actually put a video. So it's up to you. Okay, so for today, I'm just going to use my face. So I'm going to turn on my webcam. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is that, remember I told you let's do a flying rocket lens. So of course you need a picture of a rocket. So I just took an image from Google, you can do that too. Um, but you have to add it in your resource panel, right? So add new, you can also drag and drop. But I'm just adding new just to show you how it works from here. Import files. Okay, and my rocket is here. Okay, so double click it or press OK. Alright, so once it's already here, we're going to add the rocket on your screen. Okay, so where we're going to add that, we're going to add it in the objects panel. So add new screen image because it's an image on the screen, right? So add a screen image and always have this habit of renaming your, your images or anything like that so that it's easier for you to track it later on. Okay, so you have to right click, rename and let's just rename it as rocket. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is that you have to add in the image of the rocket. So click on rocket, highlight this. Okay, go on to your inspector panel, find for texture and click on default. So you have your rocket here, double click it or press OK. And then you can just resize it in the middle. Oh, so this is the place where you can do, you can view your two, 2D scene or your 3D scene. So let's say you have a 3D model, you just want to move it around, you can just move it around. But it's something simple that we're going to do today, so that's not something to worry about. Okay, so let's just make it smaller a little bit. Okay, so whatever you see here is going to appear on your screen. Okay, so once you've already added in your rocket, the next thing we're going to add in is that we want to make this whole screen a place that you can tap. So for us to do that, first thing we have to do is that we have to add in like an, a transparent image. So this image, we'll be like putting it in the settings later on as a place that we can tap. And from there, you can actually tap the whole screen and the rocket will fly. Okay, so here we're going to add new. Make sure that nothing here is highlighted. If not, it's not going to appear. So make sure that you just click on this so that nothing is highlighted. And then add new image object. So you don't have to think about the image. You don't have to download anything because we're going to make it transparent anyway. So just press image object. Okay, so this is going to appear on your screen. So we want the whole screen to be tappable, right? So uh, remember what I told you about this is how a 3D scene will look like. So in your 3D scene, you can actually go here to all these icons up here and you can choose what you want to do with it. So I want to make the whole, the image fill up my whole screen. So I'm going to scale it. So click on scale tool. And this is for your Y axis, uh, your X axis and your Z axis. So let's just make it bigger. 
uh, you can also create pull it this way okay make sure that it fills up your whole screen okay and then always look on your inspector panel okay your inspector panel notice there's something called alpha so reduce the alpha so that it'll be transparent it's there but it's transparent okay so next thing we're going to do is that we're going to animate your rocket so how do you animate the rocket in land studio itself you can just do it so you don't have to worry so much about animating it on you know uh, after effects or stuff like that you just have to animate it here so the first thing you're going to do is again since we're going to add in an ar experience add new okay go all the way down no it's not all the way down just go a few parts down and you'll see something called helper scripts so helper scripts is more of the coding part of this software so you don't have to know coding you just have to know how to use this so look here and you'll see something called tween manager tween manager is the animations manager so let's say you want to create any animation you have to use something called tweening okay so that's what we're going to do here okay so what we're going to do is that here you notice that there's something called tween manager right so click on that look at the examples i mean click on examples and let's just delete that we don't need that so just delete that okay so once you delete that okay i think it's gone already so what you're going to do is that we're just going to push this up okay push it just click on it and push it up above camera so that anything that you change below it's still under the tween under the animation so it's like one tween manager for the whole experience you don't have to put multiple okay so click on tween manager and you will see something here on the inspector panel right so don't worry so much about it so what are we going to tween we're going to tween the rocket right so click on rocket and you'll see on your inspector panel there's something called add component so add component and what are you going to add you're going to add something called script so yeah it's just at the top here i don't know why i scrolled all the way down but yeah it's here okay so once you add in script so what is the script for is for the twin manager right so click on plus and click on twin and you'll see here twin types so what is the twin type you're gonna do you're gonna change the screen right you're gonna transform something on the screen so let's look at screen transform okay so click on that twice or you can click okay and you will get another portion all together again you notice that the rocket moved right so because it's just animating okay so next thing we're going to do is that uh, for scene object don't change anything what we're going to do is that we're going to add in a twin name so let's say i want this rocket to fly so i'm just going to add in fly okay so it's simple so you add in the name fly so you're going to move it from one position to another so the movement type is from to you can also change from to from offset but let's just keep it to from to and you can decide where you want it to move from okay so let's say the starting uh i leave my x-axis as zero and i put maybe negative two for my y-axis so right now it's moving from negative two to zero it's just moving vertically but i want it to move horizontally eh hey, no diagonally sorry diagonally so we're gonna add in a place for our y-axis let's say we put eight or nine anywhere is fine so you see whether you like it or not and then we can also change our x-axis a little let's put four okay so it's moving the way i want it to move so you can just play around with this and see what you like okay so let's see this thing here called loop type okay so loop type means let's say you put it on loop so it just keeps going on and on and on as many times as you want but we're not gonna do a loop we're gonna do a trigger right so only when it taps it moves so let's change it to none okay and here play automatically means as soon as you turn on your screen it plays automatically but we don't want that we want us to tap and then it moves so turn that off also okay so don't worry so much about all this this is done okay so once we've done the twin here what we're going to do next is we're going to add the trigger which is the behavior so the behavior is you're either going to open your mouth or you're going to raise your eyebrows but today we're just going to add a tap right so again what we're going to do is that we're going to just close this up so that you don't get confused and then you're going to add new look for helper scripts again 
and this time click on behavior okay so if you click on the behavior behavior uh, in your objects panel uh, notice that on your inspector panel you have a few things here right so now your trigger is a touch event you can actually change it to anything you want face event meaning raise eyebrows open your mouth but i'm just going to leave it at touch event okay because i'm going to tap the screen and the event type will be tapping okay so what is the target that you want to touch so that's when you have to remember the, the image that we made invisible just now we made it transparent okay that's the image you want to touch so click on that okay now response type now, what is the response? As soon as you touch your screen, you want the rocket to move, right? So that was under tween, right? So run tween. That's what you're gonna. That's your response type. Run tween. Okay. And your target object is what? The rocket. So find for your rocket is under autography camera, full frame region rocket. So this is why you need to rename so that it's easier for you to find it later on. So say okay. Okay, and remember the twin name that we did earlier here in your rocket. Remember this, I named it Fly. You named it something else maybe. So this is your twin name. So make sure that you know what you're talking about. Go to your behavior script and you have to add in your twin name. So this is your last step. Okay, so as soon as you do this, it's done. So you just have to click on your screen and it's going to move. So this is your trigger event. So it's a very simple trigger event. It's just about us animating your rocket first of all, making it move where you want it to move and you're going to add a trigger which is a touch event. So yeah, that's all. So here you can actually, if you choose to publish this lens, uh, remember to change your project info. Okay, so your project info is here. Just change it to flying rocket maybe. Okay, uh, change your name. Don't forget to add in your preview, meaning take a video of yourself on Snapchat. You can also... Okay, how do you take a video? Okay, before that. <laughs> There's something here called push your lens or pair your device. Okay, so let me just turn off my pairing. Okay, I'm just going to disconnect. And then, notice that here, it changes to pair your device, right? It's not changing. Okay, so it's usually to pair your device, right? So, when you click on this, you turn on Snapchat, have a Snapchat account, turn on Snapchat, look at your code, the snap code here, and all you have to do is make sure that you tap on the middle of the screen, not the circle button, but scan it by tapping in the middle of the screen and show it to the snap code. Okay, and as soon as you do that, you will have a notification on your Snapchat saying that you can pair your device. And as soon as you pair your device, what happens is that this place changes to pairing device. Okay? So once it's paired, you can actually push your lens. And what happens is that you can actually try it out before you publish it on your phone only. Okay? Not on anybody else's phone, on your phone only. Okay. So once you try it out and you're happy with your product, change your project info, you take a video of yourself, put it as a preview, change your icon okay and then you can put in a hint so in the hint here i'm going to write tap okay and then you apply it and once you do that you can publish your lens so make sure that you have a snapchat account make sure you log into your snapchat account and just follow the steps it's very simple you can add in tags which is like hashtags on instagram you can add it here so that people who are finding for those kind of lenses can find you on snapchat all right so i'll do a more detailed video on how do you publish your lens fully in another video so check that out and yeah you did a lens today on snapchat that's all for today so do like and share this video if you found this valuable and hey don't forget to subscribe because i'm going to keep on putting more videos on how can you create filters and lenses on instagram facebook and snapchat so see you in the next video